for some reason, Pontiac was in love with 50 Cent. My daily driver in Indianapolis is a modern El Camino, and every stoplight I go to, they're like, is that the new El Camino? No, it's never gonna happen. Every Photoshop job that you see with a Chevy Cruze on the front and a pickup truck rear end on it, it is not gonna happen. General Motors is not going to rebirth the El Camino because of the pickup truck market. There is no market in the United States for an El Camino anymore. But Pontiac attempted to do it in 2010. In 2009, at the New York Auto Show, for some reason, Pontiac was in love with 50 Cent. And 50 Cent rolled out there with a Pontiac G8 and a Pontiac G8 ST, which is street truck. And they were going to introduce the 2010 Pontiac G8 ST and they were going to reintroduce an El Camino in 2010. And Pontiac died in 2009. So we never got them, even though we're, there was a few that floated around and show cars and Lord knows where they are now. So I was in love with this vehicle. I thought they were very interesting, but I knew they were Holden Utes from Australia because the G8 is a Holden Commodore. And then it became the Chevy SS, which is still a Holden Commodore. So a 2008-2009 Pontiac G8 is a VE Holden Commodore. That's it, they rebadge them, put a different bumper grill on them, ship them to the US. We got left-hand drive, six liter, four doors, we're gone. But we never got the pickup truck version, which was a ute, and we never got the wagon version, which was an estate or a statesman, and there's a bunch of different names for them. So we only got the four door version. So how on God's green earth am I going to get a left-hand drive, never made it, holding ute into the United States without everybody going on the internet and every Facebook board and every girl, it's got to be 25 years old. He's going to have ice at his house. He's going to take his car. They're not coming. What I did is I bought a 2009 Pontiac G8 GT with a horrible Carfax. I bought it cheap but I bought it right. I think I gave $13,200 for it. And this is four or five years ago. So it was, and this is not a very old car, 2009 G8 GT. We had multiple bumper covers and, and multiple owners. Then I have an Australian friend in, in North Carolina. His name is David Lowe. And David Lowe is from Australia and he is driving a Holden Ute in North Carolina. And I'm like, now how in the world did Dave Lowe get a Ute and it's left-hand drive in the U.S. And there is an old Jalopnik story with a, with a ute, and it says, how did someone get this in the United States? It's not his car, but someone else has done it. And there was a place out of Colorado that um, I didn't deal with that everybody always asks us, my car is from, my car is not from them. And uh, they're famous for bringing in utes and whatever else. I called David, and I said, Dave, I said, how on God's green earth did you, and he said, I brought a body into the United States and I'm like, well, what are you talking about? He said, a ute body and I had a G8 and they're both made by the same robots and there are many different ways in which you can convert this four-door Pontiac into a two-door Holden. And I'm like, man, lay it on me. You know, tell me what the logistics are. And my wife has a 2008 Ignition Orange G8 GT that she loves. I just bought this horrible Carfax G8 GT, one year newer, 09, and I don't really care about it. What can we do? He found me a 2009 Ute body in Australia that was in a flood. And so apparently this husband and wife in Australia got a little bit of a right left. She took off in the Ute, put it in the, in the creek, killed the bonnet, the bumper bar, everything, and flooded it, and it was a total and they call them statutory write-offs in Australia. So it was a stat write-off, and he said, I can get you the body, what's left of it, because I don't need a motor and transmission. I got one in the G8. I don't need the doors. I got two of them on the G8. I'm not gonna use the rear ones. He said, I can get it over here in the US, and I get it shipped, and we can bring it into the country. And I wanted a hard lid, which is the, they call it the tray in Australia, which goes over the bed. And uh, I said, man, uh, 
I'm ready to write the check. Let's go. For cheap, we got a body into the United States on a container. And he brought a couple more over for himself to build utes out of. I went all the way down to North Carolina with an empty truck and trailer. I met his amazing father-in-law at a body shop when he called me and said my car was in. I didn't know what I was going to get. I am just spent quite a bit of money, but not much, on this uh, ute body. And there wasn't really much left of it. It was no doors, no hood. They had to break the windshield because it didn't pass DOT in the United States. Like I was like, oh boy. But man, I've built a lot of stuff. I can do this, you know? And my friend Charles Phelps had a GXP G8 that he got rear-ended in and he did the same thing. And I'm like, if Charles can do it and Dave can do it, Travis has got this covered, right? And I got the garage and I get down there and he's got one built and another one in the shop and I'm like, whoa, like this is way beyond my pay grade. Like you're relocating the parking brake cable and all this stuff. And there are two ways to basically do this and keep it legal in the United States. And everybody flips out because it's not 25 years old and rah, rah, rah. It's not against the law to rebuild your car. I just rebuilt mine as a truck. You can cut the firewall out because the air conditioning is on one side and the steering wheel is on the other. So there are two different holes and then they need to go this way. Or you can cut the cars in half and, <laughs> and put them back together. And you're basically just drilling out all the factory welds and then re-welding everything back together again with the United States parts versus the Australian parts. And so David was like, here, here's your car. Have fun in Indiana. His father-in-law and I ate at this amazing barbecue place and I walked outside and I called my wife and I said, if I take this home, it will never get done. And I want to drive this car in my lifetime, let alone this year. She's like, what are you gonna do? I walked back in and I said, David, what do I need to do to have you do all the work? Cause you have built, this is your third one. You know what you're doing. And him and his father-in-law talked it over and they shot me a price, which was half the price of the dudes in Colorado. And I went home with an empty trailer and I came back and brought them my black Pontiac G8 GT. Clean title, crappy Carfax, and then they took my car and married it with the ute body and then called me in two months and said, come pick your car up. And I'm like going, I'm like, this is done. Like it's over and it's reasonable. And the work, the craftsmanship is incredible and it's legal. I go to North Carolina and pick up my ute and I got less than $40,000 in this thing in the United States. And... I'm like going, all right, super cool. Now how do we title it? And everybody's like going, we're on the way. ICE is going to be knocking on Travis's door any second. They know where I live. They're not coming. We get to Indianapolis, and Indiana is famous for Winnebago's and the RV Hall of Fame. If you type in Elkhart, Indiana, hand to God, up northern Indiana is the Winnebago or RV Hall of Fame. I have no idea who goes there. But if Ed Bolian and I have a Chevy Savannah van and we go put a camper rear end on it. It's still a Chevy Savannah band, but no longer it is an RV, recreational vehicle. So Indiana has this super cool thing called a body transfer affidavit because I was concerned to run it as a Pontiac because the Pontiac still has four doors. Now I have two. And if I get pulled over, they're gonna be looking for a 4S four door sedan and I'm a TK truck now. So I used a state of Indiana body transfer affidavit to retitle my car as a 2009 Holden Ute because it is a 2009 Holden Ute. It is no longer a Pontiac G8 or a four-door. When you send that in or go to the Bureau of Motor Vehicles, you surrender your Pontiac title and then they basically look at you and say, what is this? I could have called it a 2009 Ed if I wanted to or a 2015 or a 2009 Vinwicky. I could have called it a Ronald McDonald. I could have called it anything I wanted to, but it is a Holden Ute. So my truck is titled as a 2009 Holden Ute left-hand drive legal in all 50 in the United States. And it was not as difficult as like, oh my gosh, because all the guys that bring Skylines in and all these things are really bending it until it breaks. But there is a legal way to do it. And if you want to convert a Holden from a VE 2008, 2009, or even a 14 to 17 VF, they're legal. 
and everything about it is just all the airbags are still intact. Everything still works. There's no service engine lights. I got pulled over in North Carolina and the good old boy cop had no idea what he was looking at, but he still wrote me a ticket to my 2009 Holden Ute. And the ticket clinic took care of that. I daily drive this thing. I drive it every day. If I got to get mulch in it, so every stoplight, hey, is that the new El Camino? No, it's not the new El Camino, but I can understand why you would think that. But when you tell them it's a 2009, they're almost depressed. They're like, get out of here. And I'm like, we just never got them in the United States because we killed Pontiac in 2010 and 50 Cent never got his either. We'd like to thank Vincero Watches for supporting the VinWiki YouTube channel this month. Vincero makes a great selection of beautiful watches that are extremely well made, and in fact they spend five times more than any of their direct-to-consumer competitors on their materials. They just came out with this Apex Race watch that happens to match my 430 Scuderia beautifully, and I'm sure they've got something that'll go with anything you want to wear or drive. So be sure to check them out and find your next great watch today.